After doing the previous video where I attempted to prove the following claim that if you have a function on the plane which is only equal to one along one line segment here the blue line and zero elsewhere although this function is zero almost everywhere it is not in the Newtonian sub of space because it does not admit any integrable upper gradient. I started by proving it for p between 1 and infinity with p equal 1 allowed, but later in my argument that I had prepared, I noticed that it only works for p strictly bigger than 1. And right after that recording, I noticed how to do a p equal 1 case. So case of p equal 1, and because that was quite nice argument, let's repeat that for those who haven't watched that video that far. So what happens, we take a, uh, another line, let's say with a gap of delta parallel to it, and we look at these curves um, gamma y. So gamma y is the horizontal line at height y joining them. And then we use the gradient, upper gradient property that for every y between 0 and 1, integral of this uh, so we start with suppose rho is an upper gradient we want to show that it's not in L1 it's a Borel function so all these integrals will make sense so we integrate rho over um, omega y and then this is none other than integrating against the Lebesgue one measure. This must be bigger than the difference of u values at the two ends. Remember, one end u is 1 and the other end is 0. So this is equal to just 1. So we see that integrating rho along these uh, path gives 1. Then what we did was that by Fubini, uh, integral, if we do from 0 to 1 against the dy of these quantities, so gamma y rho ds, this is none other than, uh, well, integral of rho with respect to Lebesgue L2 measure on this uh, box that is created with this narrow strip. And then this is integrating one, so again, should be bigger than one. When P was strictly bigger than one, we used Hilder's inequality here to get a contradiction by letting delta be small, we sent the LP integral to infinity. With p equal 1, that argument is not there. However, look at this uh, observation. Letting delta go to 0, we will have measure of q as small as we wish. It goes to 0. It has height 1 and um, side length delta. So as small as we wish, if rho was in L1 of R2, remember that absolute continuity property of integrals, we would, re we would expect that integral over Q of this um, L1 function also goes to zero. But we've shown that it is not the case, but we saw that this integral, no matter how small this delta was, uh, maybe I can put index delta, q delta of rho del2, no matter how small this delta is, is bigger than or equal to 1. Thus, rho is not in L1 of R2. End of the story. So even for p equal 1, that function is not in the Sobolev class. The, the true reason that this is happening is that, remember that we want 
uh, the upper gradient inequality. And remember, if you have any curve connecting something outside this uh, segment to that, u minus u at the end points is 1 minus series 1. So integral of rho among any such gamma should be bigger than 1. So if you are at distance delta, you may say, okay, rho pretty much being equal to 1 over delta will work. But the point is that even if you have very short curves like these, even among these, again, integral of rho must be bigger than 1. That means rho uh, should blow up near this, and uh, there is no end like how big it should be. So technically, rho must end up with infinite value on both sides of this. And it's so big that um, the LP, L1 integral blows up to infinity right around this guy here. Um, that's the morale. So anyway, now I am very happy with this example that we have a function that is zero almost everywhere, but not in the Newtonian class of x for any p between 1 and infinity. Okay, thanks for watching.